The classic saying is that a monkey typing away at a keyboard for an infinite amount of time would eventually type out the complete works of Shakespeare. But what if I applied this to Redstone? Would it be possible to build a machine that, through complete random chance, would eventually be able to come up with the optimal wiring to any circuit? The short answer is yes, and the long answer is yes, but... But what are the limits to random noise? Is it possible for a machine like this to generate fully working circuits? Let's find out. While yes, it is possible to build a machine that does generate a random grid of redstone components, its ability to actually generate anything meaningful remains to be seen. The first circuit that I'm going to try to generate is a very simple one. It's just a button on one side and a lamp on the other. Let's see how many attempts it takes. Oh wait, that might, that might work. The reason it was able to wire itself so fast is because it used a skulk sensor, which is the most likely way for it to wire itself from one side to the other. But what would happen if I switched out the button for a lever? How long would it take to wire this? Now while you may think that the lever would only be a little bit rarer than the button to wire at most, according to my calculations, the lever would actually be over a hundred times rarer to wire than the button. This is due to the fact that skulk sensors give a pulse as an output, which works well with the button but the lever gives a continuous output, which does not work well with the skulk sensor. This means it needs to wire an entire T flip-flop connected to the skulk sensor, which is a lot rarer than just having the skulk sensor directly next to the lamp. The easiest way for it to do that would be for it to generate something like this, but even though this is only three blocks, this is extremely rare for it to generate. The skulk sensor, copper bulb, and this specific orientation of the comparator only each have a 1 in 32 chance to generate at each block. Combined, that makes it less than a 1 in 32,000 chance for it to generate. Of course, it could wire itself in more than one way, but even then, the chance for it to wire itself like this is well below 1 in 1,000. And that explains why after over two hours straight of staring at this 8x5 grid of redstone, I still hadn't gotten a single successful circuit. At this point, I realized that manually checking each randomization just wouldn't work. At this point, I'd looked at over 2,000 different randomizations, and not a single one had worked. I needed to automate this. And that's exactly what I did. This machine right here automatically detects if the generated circuit has the valid functionality. This has two improvements over manually looking at the circuits. One, I don't have to manually look at the circuits, which is good for me. And two, this right here can go as fast as my computer can run, but I can only manually check one circuit every three or so seconds. A couple of other small features that I added were a binary counter to the side that count how many randomizations it has gone through, and also a system that automatically stops the randomizer when it has found a valid circuit. Without knowing if the machine even functioned, I decided to leave it running overnight and hope for the best. When I checked on the machine the next morning, the machine had stopped, the attempt counter showed that it had gone through 8,007 randomizations, and this circuit had been generated. Exactly as I had theorized earlier, it had generated the skulk sensor, copper bulb, and comparator combo to make it so that when you activate the lever, the lamp stays on. But I don't know, skulk sensors kind of feel like cheating. What if we didn't allow them? What if we only used the classic redstone components? Would it still be able to connect the lever and the lamp? Well, theoretically, yes. In fact, off-camera while I was building the machine, I actually saw it generate a perfectly uninterrupted line of redstone dust from one side to the other that would have worked, but sadly I wasn't recording. Anyways, I've been running this machine for several thousand attempts, and it hasn't found anything, so it's very likely that the chance it does something like that again is extremely, extremely low. But how low? Even if the circuit is too unlikely for me to actually generate, we can still do some math to try to theorize how likely it would be. There are three different components that would all carry the signal forward without messing with it. Redstone dust, a repeater, facing east, and a comparator, also facing east. The repeater and comparator both have a 1 in 32 chance to generate, but the redstone dust has a much higher 10 in 32 chance to generate. In total, that would make it a 12 in 32 chance to generate one of the three components. That means that for any of these 7 blocks, there's a 12 in 32 chance for one of the components to generate. However, for this last block, it's actually a 14 in 32 chance for a valid block to generate, since it can also be any of the two solid blocks. In total, that would make it about a 1 in 2200 chance to generate. But wait, there's more. Every block only has a 60% chance to be a component. It has a 40% chance to just simply be an air block. If we factor that in, the chance would actually be about 1 in 130,000. But wait, there's more. Even if it were to successfully generate a pattern like this, 
there is still a chance that one of the adjacent blocks would be a power source, which would power the line and force it to always be on, and not work. However, this would only be an issue if the power source was next to a piece of redstone dust. I'm not going to go through my exact math for all of this, but just know that it would affect about half of all cases, meaning that the final chance would be about 1 in 261,000. Now, this does only include the scenarios where the path is perfectly straight, but it also doesn't include all of the scenarios where the path is broken by something else, so I'm going to do a bit of hand-wavy math and say that they cancel out and that the previous number is still mostly accurate. Considering that my machine can only check about 3,000 circuits per hour, it would have taken almost three and a half days of continuous running to find one valid circuit. And while that still is within the realm of possibility, let's look at some circuits that aren't. Take the classic 3x3 piston door. How likely would it be for my machine to generate one of these? The first issue is that my machine doesn't actually have the correct set of items to be able to even generate a 3x3 piston door. To solve this, I'm going to switch to this set of items for the rest of this part. I'm also going to assume that all of the item counts in this piston door are consistent across all of the piston doors of this form factor. I know this is not true, but it'll make the math a lot easier. And finally, I'm just going to assume that there are 10,000 different piston doors that can be made in this form factor. This is very likely not true, but as you'll see later, it won't really affect the final number. To start, I'm going to go through each block one by one and find the probability for it to be that specific block. After doing this for all of the blocks in the piston door, we get this, which can be simplified down to this. And then finally, we multiply this by the 10,000 number that I estimated earlier. Written as a percentage, that would be this. This is roughly equivalent to the probability of picking one specific atom out of all of the atoms in the entire universe. In more Minecrafty terms, that's also roughly equivalent to the chance of picking one specific block out of any of the three dimensions from any of the 18 quintillion different seeds back to back. Circling back to what I said at the start of the video, it's safe to say that while yes, a machine like this could technically generate a 3x3 piston door or some other similar machine, it just will not happen. Thanks for watching. Bye.